How do pros seem to know exactly what's coming before their opponent has even hit the ball? Do they have some kind of spidey sense? Do they have a crystal ball? Or do they live in some kind of reality that the rest of us are not privy to? The answer really is no. But through years and years of practice and hopefully through good coaching, they know exactly what to look for to anticipate their opponent's most probable shot. And in this video, I'm going to show you exactly what those things are so you can make better decisions sooner. The things that can tell you what is most likely to come are the grips, the swing pass, the balance of your opponent, and how their body is positioned. So let's start with racket face and grips. A lot of newer players have issues reading slices. So they end up being surprised by a shorter ball and they also don't exactly know how that slice is bouncing because they just haven't seen enough of those. Both the grip and the swing path of a slice, whether it's backhand, forehand, I'm gonna show you both, are completely different than a drive, one-hander, two-hander, or a forehand. But what exactly do you wanna look for? Slices are hit with the continental grip. So if you see the grip change, that is the earliest you can pick up that a slice is coming. If you see a grip change from whatever forehand grip it is, could be a full Western, that's probably the most dramatic, to semi-Western to Eastern, sliding into the continental grip, you know that a slice is coming. If you're not seeing that, and that's perfectly fine, you will see the take back that is very different than a regular forehand. The take back of the slice lacks the preparation, the help really of the offhand. So you most likely see something like this here. The racket face looks very different. It is open, so it already points up. So if I'm hitting a slice here, I'm then also not coming all the way under the ball. I don't have the racket drop and then I'm swinging forward and up to contact point. I will bring my racket forward in a more linear swing. Yes, it has a slight down motion, but it's really more an extension. The same goes for the backhand slice. And especially if you play a two-hander, the dead giveaway will be that a lot of times the left hand is coming up to the throat as it should and then they're hitting a slice here instead of the racket up a little higher above their hand, racket drop, and then the forward and up motion towards contact point. Even if they're not releasing the left hand to come to the throat, this is the take back for a two-handed slice, which you're probably not gonna see as often. And definitely, if you play a one-hander, this is the take back for a regular drive, topspin. And I would again let the racket drop and then drive forward and up. Nope, I'm taking the racket back here. Again, the racket face is open, it points more towards this guy, and then it's this motion here. So that is how you can see the slice. Look at the grip first, and then the racket head. You read the grip change to a continental grip, you read the higher take back, you read the open racket face. How's this ball now gonna bounce? A slice. It's most likely gonna skid through the court a little bit more, it's gonna sit lower, which means you probably have to move up to it a little bit more, and you also have to work a lot more to get under the ball. So let that racket head drop under the ball more and also use these. A great option, of course, is to just slice it back. Another time when the racket position gives away what's about to come is in doubles. So just imagine you're my opponent now, and it can be either all four of us are up or you are up and your partner is actually behind you. If you're seeing a racket go up, that means that your partner, or maybe you even, pop that ball up and I am, as your opponent, I'm having a high ball. And you see that way before, obviously, I'm about to hit the ball. That means I can close in and that for you is trouble you're most likely about to get clobbered. So hunker down, defense. On the other hand, if either you or your partner, doesn't matter who hit the ball, manages to get the ball down low, I will have to lift that ball. And a lot of times by the time that I have popped up the ball and on the other side, you are seeing this, it's too late to bounce forward and still catch the ball above net line. 
So you have to look at something way before I'm actually hitting the ball. So if you're seeing the ball coming from you and you're seeing my racket head dip below the line of the net, you're seeing my racket face and the ball, of course, through the mesh of the net, that is your cue to move forward. Because what else am I gonna do here? I'm gonna pop that ball up. And yeah, it could be that by chance, I'm gonna pop the ball up over your head, but it's gonna be so slow that you can either get back under it, hit an overhead, or you can run it down. And a lot of times you also see people doing this. So if you see the butt sticking out, they're gonna pop it up, close in. Let's switch to another scenario. You are coming in. So again, this is from your perspective as the incoming player. What do you have to look for to know what kind of passing shot is coming? And that does include the lob. If you're seeing your opponent running back all the way over here, to come across their body, again, almost impossible, most likely a lob, especially if they switch into a continental grip, especially when a two-hander changes to a one-hander and continental grip, or if they're just running through here, I'm gonna go down the line. Because again, across my body, very unlikely. And for both of these instances, I got some real life examples. So at this point, this player here is hitting a really good deep approach shot. And now look at the first reaction here. This player here can't move forward. He is being, he's forced to move sideways and take a step backwards. Right there. So this is the cue for this player here not to close in absolutely crazily because most likely a lob is coming. So you're clearly seeing here how this player has to back up and it is a lob. So in this position, that's a little too close. I wouldn't want to come in that close anyways, no matter what, but definitely when you're hitting that higher approach shot, a lob is very likely. He does get the ball, but he's forced to hit it behind his head and he can not put that away. So that was a little bit of a misread here. Now we get into a passing shot. Again, we have an approaching player and you see how this player here in the foreground has to react. He can't move forward. You see by this position of his knee, of his hips, of his foot, that he's gonna be pulled out wide. So very unlikely that he's gonna out of this position hit that little dink angle. So you see that stride here, way wide and the right foot is now behind the left and he's just reaching. So at this point, you needed to come over to cover the line because that's where he's gonna go. That's the only play he has. 